In the chart, we completed an activity where we graphed the equation, we sketched the graph, and we found the vertex, which is the minimum or maximum point. Very briefly, I will review. So the first graph looks somewhat like this. The vertex, or the minimum in this case, was the ordered pair 3, 4. In vertex form, this equation became y equals 2 x minus 3 quantity squared plus 4. Next problem. When we graphed, our equation looked somewhat like this. This time we had a maximum point. And the ordered pair for that was negative 2, 4. The vertex form of this equation is y equals negative 3, parenthesis, x plus 2, quantity squared, plus 4. The final graph looked approximately like this. It had a minimum point with a ordered pair of 1, comma, negative 3. The vertex form of this equation was y equals the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 3. We want to then make conclusions about the formatting. So the first conclusion that I want to reach is that I notice the A, which is the first number in each of these standard form formulas, and the A, which is the first number in each of these vertex form formulas, is the exact same number. In the last formula, the A is an unwritten one in both formulas. And so all throughout, the A is the same in both versions of the formula. The H. For the H, what I notice is that in the vertex, which is either the minimum or the maximum, the H is similar to the X value. And I say similar to because I notice that between the X value and the H in the formula, there is the sign change. The sign change occurs because the vertex form includes a subtraction in the formula. So what I notice is that to get H in vertex form, use the x value of the vertex. I also notice that because the formula has a subtraction, there is a sign change. Finally, looking at K. What I notice about K is that it matches with the Y value. This time in the formula, it is plus K. And so when I look at the y value of the vertex, it is exactly the y value or the k value in the vertex form. So for k, we will use the y value of the vertex. So the next thing that we want to do is to put these observations into play to switch to vertex form. Vertex form is a lovely form because it gives us the vertex, which is a maximum 
or a minimum value, and I should note this before I go on to do these, when the A value was the negative, that's when it was concave down. So this A value really controlled the concavity. So for this, if A is positive, that means it will be concave up, which is our U shape. And if we have a negative A value, like we did in the second one, that will give us something that is concave down. which is that N shape. So if I know the vertex and I know the concavity, I can very quickly create a sketch and I can envision a sketch without having to actually graph the problem. But for these problems, we are going to use the graphing calculator and our goal is to switch to vertex form. Our procedure is to use the calculator to find the vertex. Use the A from the standard form and then plug in the correct values for H and K. So I'm going to go to my graphing calculator and I'm going to type the first formula in the Y equals section of my calculator. So I previously cleared all the other things out. So I will type negative 3X squared minus 7X plus 4. Now, it does not always work, but it often works that when we are in an algebra problem that is not in context, we can use one of the Zoom features. So we will pick Zoom, and we will choose option six, the standard Zoom. And it worked very well here. We see the parabola, we see the vertex of the parabola, and so we have all the details that we need without going through individual window adjustments. In order to find the vertex, I recognize that based on the shape of the parabola, this has a maximum point. So second and trace. I choose option four for maximum. I first move my cursor to the left of the maximum and hit enter for left bound. Move my cursor to the right of the maximum and hit enter for right bound. And I do come back and guess and hit enter and I get this decimal answer. And so we are going to need to round at some point, and so I'm gonna to round to two decimal places for each of these values. So coming back to my PowerPoint, I like to conclude a little sketch so I remember what I was looking at, and so I had this parabola here. I found this vertex, which was a maximum point, and I had for that point a negative 1.17, rounding to two decimal places, and 8.08, again, rounding to two decimal places. Now, in standard form, we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In vertex form, we have y equals a, x minus h quantity squared plus k. We noted on the previous slides that the a's match. So I immediately recognize this negative 3 is the a value that gave me the concave down shape. So I start my vertex formula with a equal, or excuse me, y equals negative 3. Next, I have a set of parentheses that starts off with an X and that has a squared. We noted that the H came from the X value. We also noted that there was a sign change. So I would put this in for H. It would actually be minus a negative 1.17. Two negatives make a positive, which is negative 3 parentheses X plus. 1.17 quantity squared. It is because of the negative in the formula, the negative in our x value, that they, beget, they become this plus, and that's where we see that sign change. We then noted that we would be using the 
y value as the k. So I'll put plus 8.08. .08. And so this is a rewritten version of the formula that now shows us the vertex point. Sometimes I like to feel like I have proof. So I'm going to go back to my calculator and I'm going to graph this version of the formula as well. This is much easier to see on the color edition if you have an older version rather than color edition. You might skip this and just view the image here on the video. So you can see for my Y2, what I am doing is typing the formula that we came up with in vertex form. I did let my standard form equation as my Y1. So my Y1 is going to be blue, my Y2 is going to be red. They should be the same parabola. So I hit graph. And I don't know, it was really fast if you called it or not, but it used to be blue and the red one literally graphed right on top of it very quickly in an instant. And so we do have this verification that we have the exact same parabola, one on top of the other. The second example is in a separate video, but you can watch that one to go through the process again.